also, uh, Senator, several senators have brought up about the 6% and the 99% and things like that that I thought I ought to clear up because uh, I could say myself that when I first started finding out how much paper Judge Kavanaugh had uh, on his record, I mean, for his background, Y'all, this shit is not fake. At all. I'm gonna play that shit again. <clears throat> they need to go straight to jail for that shit. That shit wrong, y'all. And she feel like she a young girl, too. Yeah. Umbrella. What is good, my people? We are live back again with another episode of The Forecast. Now, since there has been so much talk about respecting our troops and so many people lecturing about respecting our veterans, in Atlanta, there was an Air Force veteran, Anthony Hill, who had mental illness. He was suffering from PTSD after he got back from Afghanistan. And he was shot and killed by DeKalb County police. Even though this military veteran was unarmed and obviously suffering from a mental breakdown. So let's see how this young brother, who was a military vet, ended up getting shot by the police. Officer involved shooting. First, this exclusive video shows the naked man minutes before an officer shot and killed him. Channel 2's Darren Morris live in DeKalb County at the apartment complex where it happened. And Darren, we now know the man's name. And Fred, late last night, the Cass County Police identified the man as 27-year-old Anthony Hill. The shooting happened in this apartment complex called The Heights at Shambly. Now, witnesses described some strange and bizarre moments before officers arrived here, but this is cell phone video exclusive to Channel 2 Action News. We blurred out part of the video of a man walking around naked at an apartment complex here on Shambly Tucker Road. Residents called DeKalb County Police Monday afternoon when they saw 27-year-old Anthony Hill hanging from a balcony and crawling on the ground with no clothes on. Well, here's what DeKalb's public safety director said happened when officers showed up. It observed a nude male out in the parking lot. When the male saw the officer, he charged running at the officer. The officer called him to stop while stepping backwards, drew his weapon, and fired two shots. Hill died on the scene. Police said he did not have a weapon, and the officer who fired the fatal shots is a seven-year veteran of the force. And because of the circumstances surrounding the shooting, well, DeKalb police said they will step aside, and they brought in the GBI to handle this investigation. A 27-year-old African-American male was shot dead by DeKalb County police. This happened Monday afternoon in Chambly, which is a suburb just outside of Atlanta. DeKalb County police received a phone call from a resident at the Heights of apartment complex, which stated there was a man behaving deranged, running around naked and crawling on the ground. The caller even said that they saw the naked man randomly knocking on doors, telling people he was okay. Witnesses said the naked man was climbing porches and just behaving strangely. Now, the man, now identified as Anthony Hill, a resident at the Heights, was met by a police officer who's a seven-year veteran of the force. That's according to DeKalb County Director of Public Safety and Police Chief Cedric Alexander. Chief Alexander, who is at present not naming the officer involved, says that the officer shouted at Hill to go inside or get arrested. Now, that's according to witness statements. Now, this is where witness accounts begin to diverge. Some witnesses say that Hill didn't appear to be mentally competent and comprehend the commands coming from the officer, so he began to approach the officer with open arms. Now, other witnesses described the approach as an aggressive lunge or even a charge, at which time the officer opened fire. He shot twice, both times hitting Hill in the chest. Anthony Hill died at the scene. Now, one thing that eyewitnesses agreed on was that they believed that Hill appeared to be unarmed. 
Now, it's been confirmed by Chief Alexander that the responding officer was also equipped with non lethal weapons, including a taser and pepper spray. This is part of what Chief Alexander wants to understand is why the officer chose to draw his firearm rather than pursue other methods. Now, Chief Alexander also said that his officers do undergo some special training in dealing with mentally ill people, but he said apparently more is needed. Now, Hill's death is the third shooting death of an apparently unarmed black man by a white police officer since Friday. Just on the heels of 19 year old Tony Robinson in Madison, Wisconsin. And on the same day on Friday in Aurora, Colorado, Nashellis Vincent, a parolee who cut off his ankle monitor, they were both shot and killed by police. Now, this fatal shooting investigation is being handed over to an independent group in an effort to maintain transparency and fairness. This will now be handled by the Georgia Bureau of Investigations. So, this brother, Anthony Hill, who was a military veteran suffering from PTSD, and was having a mental breakdown, and he was obviously unarmed, was running around his neighborhood naked, and people called for help. So Officer Robert Olson ended up responding to the call. Now, according to this cop, he was sitting in his car waiting for backup, and he probably was terrified, but if you're that scared, you need to turn in your gun and badge. Then he claimed his brother Anthony Hill started to approach him, and that's when he got out of his car. Now, one story says the cop told him to go back in his house or he will get shot. But in another story, this cop, Robert Olson, said he told him to stop, but he wouldn't listen. Now, some witnesses say he approached him with his arms open and in a non-threatening way. But other witnesses say he lunged towards the cop. Now, keep in mind, when they say witnesses, they can use other cops as witnesses. But the cop, Robert Olson, says when he charged him, he told him to stop and he refused to comply. And these cops love to say how people don't comply with their orders. And if they had just been good Negroes and did what masters say, then none of this would have happened. But since this brother Anthony Hill didn't comply, he had no other choice but to shoot and kill him. Now, this cop had pepper spray. He had a taser, but he chose to use his gun. Even though you can clearly see he was unarmed and you have witnesses say he wasn't a threat to the cops. One of his fellow officers, Lynn Anderson, tried to cover for him, saying this young brother who was a military vet was attacking him, not realizing that was actually video of what happened. And the officer, Robert Olson, eventually acknowledged that this brother never attacked him. And there were so many contradictions in the police story. Now, eventually, they did end up charging this cop, Robert Olson, with murder. Well, today marks two years since an Air Force veteran was shot and killed by a DeKalb County police officer. 27-year-old Anthony Hill, whose family says he suffered from PTSD, was naked and unarmed when he was shot by Officer Robert Olson during an encounter. Olson was indicted by a grand jury and faces felony murder along with other charges. And now we've learned the DA has appointed a new prosecution team in that case. Fox 5's Natalie Pozo is live outside the DeKalb County Courthouse tonight where veterans held a prayer vigil for Anthony Hill. Sine Russ as several veterans gathered outside of the DeKalb County Courthouse today to remember Anthony Hill. Now, according to the DA's office, Hill's case is currently at the Georgia Supreme Court after the defense filed an appeal alleging an issue with the presentation during grand jury proceedings. I spoke with Hill's family today, and they tell me while they would like to see this process move forward, they are being patient and relying heavily on their faith. Our last conversation, he said, Uncle P, all the, world's need, all the world needs is love. So that's what we live by. All the world needs is love. Pierre Baylor feels like it was just yesterday that his nephew, Air Force veteran Anthony Hill, said those words to him. Two years later, Hill's family waits for trial while his case is on appeal in the Georgia Supreme Court. Hopefully the process will speed up and... What we feel is right will happen. And that's all you can hope and pray for. Baylor drove from South Carolina, where most of Hill's family lives, to attend this prayer vigil organized by Justice for Veterans. They bless their families as they go forward. Walk with them all the way, oh God, and give them peace. 
Retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Amos King speaking outside the DeKalb County Courthouse. His death would not be in vain. Addressing the issue of mental illness among many veterans, Hill's family says he suffered from PTSD. We say among ourselves, the VA is waiting for you to die. And that's a sad situation. That's a sad commentary for those who gave their life. Like Anthony Hill, he wouldn't serve his country. He was not killed on foreign soil. He was killed right here in the United States. DeKalb County District Attorney Sherry Boston appointed a new prosecution team to the case. Hill's family says they feel fortunate their case has a chance of receiving justice when so many others don't. We hurt for all families just to lose lose a loved one when you feel like it was preventable or it didn't have to happen. That's, that's anybody, no matter what circumstance. And according to the DA's office, there is no specific timeline as to when we can expect a ruling from the Georgia Supreme Court. Now, even though they did charge this cop Robert Olson, three years later, they still haven't gone to trial. This cop has been out living his life the whole time. And every time they set a date for the trial, and every time the trial is supposed to happen, they push it back further and further. And they obviously do it for a reason. This cop, Robert Olson, asked for immunity for killing this obviously unarmed military veteran. And in a lot of cases, they actually do give the cops immunity for killing people. Even though this brother, Anthony Hill, posed no threat and was unarmed, and this cop had a taser, he had pepper spray, and he outweighed him by a lot. He claims that he feared for his life. This cop says he acted out of self-defense and had no choice but to shoot and kill this young brother. Fiery testimony in the courtroom as prosecutors grill a former DeKalb County police officer charged with murdering an unarmed veteran. Robert Olson said today he was acting in self-defense when he killed Anthony Hill, but prosecutors argue Hill never attacked him. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross is live outside the courtroom, and she has spoken to Hill's family as they left for the day. Jeff, this was really intense. The prosecutor at one point asking former DeKalb officer, you weren't scared of Anthony Hill, were you? You were disgusted by him. At times, Robert Olson tearing up, choking up on the stand, telling the judge he genuinely feared for his life when he got out of the car and shot Anthony Hill. Did you think you were being attacked? <clears throat> yes, sir. Did you think he was going to cause you great bodily harm? Yes, sir, I did. Did you think that you were about to be a victim of a forcible felony? Yes, sir. What? I just know he didn't stick to the facts. He lied. He lied. As he's lied from day one, this was a, a calculated assassination. That's what it is. In cold blood, and now he's lying. That was Anthony Hill's family you heard from there calling Anthony Hill's murder a cold-blooded assassination. They sat through the entire day of testimony saying it was difficult to listen to. There were a lot of videos shown of that incident. They said it was hard, but they felt like it was important that they be here. Tomorrow is the second day of the immunity hearing. After that, the judge is going to make a decision whether or not to dismiss these charges or send the case to trial. Robert Olson teared up at times while he was on the stand today as the defense team tries to convince a judge he shot Anthony Hill in self-defense. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross is at the courthouse tonight. Caitlin, why are the prosecutors pushing back so hard? Cheryl, this was a really contentious hearing. At one point, Robert Olson saying on the stand, I was just trying to do my job. The prosecutor shooting back at him. What you did was murder. They went back and forth at times. Robert Olson, the man accused of murder in this case, was tearing up trying to recall what had happened. They replayed the call back to police after he shot and killed Anthony Hill. You could hear Robert Olson breathing really heavily, sounding really distressed. He gave his testimony after both the apartment manager and a use of force expert testified. Now Robert Olson testifying in his own immunity hearing, telling the judge what happened when he pulled up at that apartment complex and got out of the car. He says Anthony Hill charged him. Saying the words that you said to him at the tone of voice and the volume that you said that. You don't have to use the microphone. Oh, but, yeah. uh, 
Stop, stop! He says he then shot Anthony Hill. Maybe one second later, Anthony Hill's entire family was in the courtroom today listening to that testimony, shaking their heads at times. I talked to them after the break, though, and they say they feel confident that this prosecution is going to go forward. At this point, after it wraps up, it's going to be up to the judge. He makes the call. It's called an immunity hearing because if the judge rules that he acted in self-defense, those charges will be dismissed. Now, three and a half years later, they still haven't gone to trial. They still haven't even set a trial date. Now, this cop Robert Olson did lose his bid for immunity. And they said he was unable to show that it was reasonable for him to kill him and that he felt threatened. And this cop is still facing two counts of felony murder, aggravated assault, making false statements, and two counts of violation of oath by a public officer. But still, after four years, it's unclear about when the trial will actually start. And we can't just be happy that a cop gets indicted or charged with a murder. A lot of times they push the trial date back, and in most cases they end up dropping the charges or charging them with something less or reducing the charges. And even when the police are charged, they barely face any punishment. We can't be satisfied until the cop serves the last day of the harshest punishment he can get. And all those people who talk about disrespecting the troops and disrespecting the vets, you don't hear them say one word about this. Those same people aren't worried about the mental health of those veterans when they come back from war. They're not outraged about the treatment they get because they don't really care about the troops. It's just an excuse. I don't see their outrage, especially when it's an unarmed black military vet who was shot by police. Then it's right back to he should have complied. And it shouldn't be a surprise. We should understand by now, after hundreds of years, the environment we live in. And until we put aside our tribal differences and get on code, we're going to continue to be subject to their rules, their laws, their punishment, and whatever they say goes. We just have to comply. And even when you do comply, they still find another excuse if you end up shot. And it's always easier for us to attack each other because we don't have no power and we can't defend ourselves. But until we focus on the real root of the problem and realize we are all we got, then the same cycle will continue to happen. Come out with your hands up, face away from us. Face away, face, go to the sidewalk, face away. Hands up high in the air. Face away from us, walk to the sidewalk. Look away from us. Walk backwards towards the sound of my voice. Backwards towards the sound of my voice. Backwards to the sound of my voice. Back to our squad. And if you want to put them on the sidewalk here, that'll be okay for me. All right. Stop. Get down on your knees. On your knees. Keep your hands up. Don't move. You understand? You understand not to move? You good look? 
so I apologize for that guy not knowing what he was talking about. But I'm, I'm sure he's I got had, two old white ladies in a car with a black kid and makes them assumptions. Well, he was black as well, so oh I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, then it's even worse. I don't, let me just get your name real quick. Okay. Look, he's all good. It's the grandson. Officer Gabriel is going to get some information from you, okay? Okay. He says the same thing. All right. You didn't have any ID with you, did you, ma'am? Nothing at all? Okay. Well, I'm guessing what this sounds like is a really big misunderstanding, and I'm not exactly quite sure what's going on, but the officers that uh, actually, the reason we stopped you is somebody told them something about what was going on in that car. So I don't know what they saw that they perceived was going on, but obviously that's the reason that we have contact with you right now, okay? So what it seems like is that, like I said, there's some type of misunderstanding. I understand that's, uh, who's the driver? Um, my, my, my grandma's friend. Grandma's friend? And grandma's in the front seat passenger side? Okay. All right. How old are you, young man? 18. 18. And what is your first name? Akio. Spell it for me. A-K-I-L. Can you speak up? I can't hear you. A-K-I-L. A-K-I-L? Yeah. And your middle initial? K. And the last? C. What is it? C. What's your last name? Carter. Spell it for me. Carter. C-A-R-T-E-R. I'm with 148. We got one detained here. Uh, Julie, what is your date of birth? Original. You got to speak up I, with the traffic, with the radio. I honestly, God, can't hear you. And a home address for you, Akil. Okay, I don't know what's that? I don't know You don't know it? Okay. Do you stay with Grandma? Sometimes? Who do you usually live with? Mom, Dad, your father? What's his name? Donald. What is it? Donald. Same last name? No, what's his last name? Nelson. What is it? Nelson. Nelson? Yeah. And how about a good phone number for you, Kill? Big and pregnant. He's talking about or oh, what? I would have decked his ass. every second, sir, since you got out of the car. Do your business. Get the fuck one out of here. Thank you so much. Yes, I am. 
You are about to hit a pregnant woman. I have it here on camera. Call the police, but this white man about to jump on this damn pregnant girl. Hell no. She better than me because my pregnant ass would have fucked the fuck out his old ass. Run your motherfucking mouth. That's all you want. Sweetheart, the last thing I want to do is tase you like that. When I say stop, you stop. You know you caught. Just stop. That hurt my heart. To do that to you. Then I got to listen to all these idiots out here in the parking lot. Tell me how I was wrong for tasing you. You broke the law. And you fled. As I tried to apprehend you. Y'all took this too? You know what sweetheart. This is why there aren't any grocery stores in the black community. Because of all this is going on. Well, I'm the one actually made the first post. Ray John Wesley, known as Coach Boom, says he was surprised by the memo when a fellow coach sent it to him. I said, no, I didn't see it, but we're going to make sure everybody else sees it. And that's when I went to Instagram and then I went to share it on Facebook, too. Highly disappointed. Can't believe that somebody of that political stand would do something against children. This is that memo sent to Kenner's Director of Parks and Recreation. The letter signed by Mayor Ben Zahn says, in part, under no circumstances will any Nike product or any product with the Nike logo be purchased for use or delivery at any city of Kenner Recreation Facility. So can the mayor enforce it? WDSU political analyst Dr. Silas Lee says yes. At the end of the day, voters are not going to judge him on it, and he recognizes where he is is a very conservative district. On social media, some applauded the decision. What is the reason for this? Because I have to have an understanding of that. Kenner's District 1 Councilman Gregory Carroll says he's 